This program is intended for mature audiences only. listening to this without permission, please stop. This is not for you. Well, Trapper, this is the beginning of the end. Possibly the middle. Fog swallowed the fence, the shoes, everything. Then the tower started to shake. Not shake, vibrate, like high energy, live wires. I can feel it. My molars hurt. Stinks of ozone. Like when we used to drive those little race cars around that track in the basement. (laughs) I might be fucked. Bags packed, I'm staring at the door, but I can't go. Thought I'd check just to see what was on the other side this time. One more signal to see if it's a place I would want to be. I'm not asking for paradise, I just would like to continue living. And I think, with what I know now, that this one's not worth the risk. (laughs) Okay. Okay, here goes. On the contrary, I think this may prove something we end up celebrating. The first passage changed the world irrevocably. And for nearly two centuries, we have benefited in almost every conceivable way. Now, with the second passage of Comet Victoria, the veil has opened wider still. What we have yet to discover may be only limited by our time on this Earth. There's no shame or prejudice in preferring the company of the living. The mystery is gone, and death will truly unite us all in the end. But why must we bury ourselves in their concerns while we yet breathe? We are concerned, Prime Minister. Those of us with the deepest sight once had to struggle to perceive a non-human spirit. Now, I fear this new change may expose you to more than you wished for. Even the most mundane eyes will be unclouded. We did not ask to be bound here. Like the living, we make the best with the hand we were dealt. We've made compromises with our very rights in the name of community. But now the shores of Styx teem with new spirits once invisible to us. Weaker shades. Am I to surrender my hard-earned gains in pursuit of fairness to the affirma that couldn't push through the veil without help? It's not a question of love. It's a question of spirit and willpower. Now, I guarantee I can make your husband appear, but you have to close your eyes. Around the world, the sounds of celebration. 75 years have passed since Comet Victoria lit up the night sky and changed our very way of life. Side by side, the living and the dead raise their glasses and spectral fists high. The Diamond Jubilee is observed globally as together we reflect on how our lives have improved since the Great Passage. In August of 1864, just as Comet Victoria tore down the walls that divided us from those who have gone on, the world was gripped by violence. In America, the last great war had just entered a bloody new phase, when an impossible alliance stopped both armies in their tracks. Union and Confederate shades, hand in hand, stood upon the battlefields and begged their brothers to lay down their arms. We were the first, under the light of the comet, newly dead and attached to blood-soaked land. We hadn't ever learned to be invisible like the old ones. When the comet opened your eyes and we could be seen, well, we did 
what we had to do. It wasn't long before the old ones came out of hiding and it stood with us where they could. Y'all have an eternity on this side, don't you fret? But there is no earthly reason to waste your quick days in violence. We wouldn't stand for it then, and we won't now. The world changed overnight and continued to change as man and ghost learned to live side by side. With the return of her beloved Prince Albert, the black pall that hung over England vanished, and the queen, namesake of the comet, emerged from her grief-imposed exile, hand in spectral hand with the royal consort. Out of their joint rule began the reconciliation, which saw Greater England and its allies divest itself from colonial holdings over the next 50 years, returning sovereignty to formerly conquered lands. Every country found themselves changed overnight, enriched by the wisdom of the past and altered in ways they could not predict. The sin of Cain, when Abel can speak for himself, changed our justice systems overnight. Murder itself became a rarity. Yes, Your Honor. The man who killed me is sitting right there. It has not always been easy, and we did not always accept this gift with the purest of intentions. A baptized soul is eternal. And what you possess that makes you holy, our ancestors share as they rest in peace beside us. Whatsoever you do to the least of the spirits, you do unto me. Spectral law continues to evolve to this day. But with the global adoption of resting rights at the Council of Nations in 1882, the dignity and well-being of all spirits are enshrined in law. Don't moan like your returned relatives are an obligation. They are not mouths to feed. They are fountains of knowledge we might otherwise have lost. They are watchful eyes in our children's nurseries. They are the comfort that keeps life so sweet. When we fail to protect their rights, what will our children think of us? From floor plans of houses to the layouts of cities, there is nothing in our life that has not been affected by the touch of Comet Victoria. When she returns next century, if astronomers' predictions are correct, we can only dream of what changes she may bring. I don't care if that's what she's been saying. I'm not putting anything out there with my name attached until I'm certain. Now, have we seen the worst of the effects? Or is the situation developing? It's 5.15 and you're watching My 58 News on Channel 58. As of today, Comet Victoria is no longer visible from the Northern Hemisphere, so unless you've got a private jet, you'll have to wait another 160 years until your chance comes around again. We'll have to wait a little longer until the Council of Nations releases its full report, but anecdotally, around the world the effects remain the same. Madame Canara of the Spectral Authority of Greater England spoke at the conclusion of the conference in Stockholm yesterday evening. There is, of course, nothing to fear. None of these new arrivals are surprises to us. The sensitives have been aware of them since the first passage, but now the gift has been widened to you. Late last week, you likely noticed the phenomenon yourself as new spirits become visible to the general population. The effect seems to extend beyond human spirits, although their existence was reported by the sensitives for decades. You at home may now be lucky enough to see someone a little familiar. Boy, come here, boy. I mean, I'm still in shock. Ask me tomorrow. Right now, I'm just so happy. I guess I didn't know how much I missed him. And he doesn't make a mess anymore. Oh, sweetie, that's true. He can't. Of course, not everyone is as thrilled with the new arrivals. Look, real happy for everybody. I get it, joyous occasion. But we've got a very specific set of issues that we're puzzling with. It was the apes first, but now it's the whole zoo. Giraffes on down. We can sedate the live ones, but the new arrivals are in a constant state of panic. And they don't want to leave their old cages. Which is a problem since we renovated. Because 
Now we have reptile ghosts in the capybara enclosure. Oh, man. They're scared. All of them. No way to explain what's going on. I mean, they must have been like this all along. And we're just seeing it now. <sighs> kind of sucks to think about, actually. <laughs> but new challenges are just a small price to pay for the loving reunions happening worldwide. We want to know, has your pet returned? Send your photos to My58News at the address on your screen. None of us consented to this merging of worlds. Not the living, nor the dead. Do not think that just because we do not wish to live beside them, that we wish them ill. We just ask for the ability to join them in our own time. They are bound to the places of their deaths, but we are not. Okay, you're rolling? Yep. Yeah. You ready? This doesn't look so bad, right? You were the house. Because you look cute, but the house is giving rancid vibes. Hi, Barbara Gunderson? Yeah? Hey, you're from the agency. Yes, ma'am. Scary and Sparks, Spectre Inspectors. This is Ginger Sparks, and I'm Richard Scary. Like, like the, the chil children's book author. Yes, ma'am. That's the one. May we come in? Yeah. Come on. Thank you. This is the living room, where the little one shows up the most. And you said the house was unfurnished? That's right. We brought all the furniture. Hmm. The sheets must have all been here prior. The previous owner didn't disclose anything? <laughs> no. It was an estate sale auction. Who's there? Help me. I'm all alone. I'm so scared. Ooh, here we go. Nope. Don't listen to her. Not one little bit. You watch yourself, Barbara. Is she as old as she looks, or is this a false projection? How dare you! Oh, I'm sorry. We're just trying to see if you predate the house. You're just inspectors. Hush now, lovelies. Oh, likey Jack's come to play. Jack, give it a rest, love. They're not bothered. Yeah, that one isn't even English. For fuck's sake, Barbara, can't you let me have this one thing? Is it just these two? Oh, no. Quiet. You don't want to wake him. We mustn't anger Odd not. Who trespasses upon my slumber? Yeah, that's the other one. I will rent your eternal soul. That's really all he does. And he doesn't leave the attic. I choose to remain here, Barbara. As it happens, I used to work real estate before we joined the agency, and this isn't an uncommon infestation. The problem is locating their anchors. Given the diverse collection of hints you have on the property, there's no telling which piece of lumber or which recycled iron nail keeps them here. So, wait, what are my options? You can always demolish, bring the debris to an approved sanctuary. But if their anchors are beneath the foundations... Oof. Oh, I told him. Other than that, you can put it back on the market. With the proper declaration. Can this economy? No, nothing. I can't see anything anymore. And the sounds are getting louder. Madam Kanara, we're going to send a car to pick you up. We'd like to keep you and the other affected sensitives under observation. But if, if, if a stray cat, okay, had come onto my property and died, would that now be something I'm culpable for? Mrs. Montague, I'll ask you one more time. Did you have a cat when you were living at 174C Northampton Lane? If I did, or I didn't, it was reasonable at the time to assume that it wouldn't have left a shade behind. May I take that as a yes? You may not. That's fine. Unfortunately, the issue is simple violation of the contract. No pets allowed, signed by you. The evidence itself <clears throat> is spectral, and if found at fault, you will be culpable for the losses to the property owner. But I cannot grant amnesty just because you didn't think it was possible to be caught at the time. Spectral law is ever-evolving. Motion dismissed. Let's move along. What's next? Mr. Alfred Vance, a.k.a. Mr. Mysterioso, 
on charges of spectral fraud. Oh, Alfred. Hey, Judge Tanner. Back so soon. I'm genuinely sorry. If it makes any difference, I truly had the best of intents. Please stop talking. Judge, I'm being advised to stop talking. Oh, uh, I understand. Yeah, it sounds advice. Looks like you're still working with the same law shades. Do not answer that. My fault. She's right. Shut up. My pleasure. Okay, this looks cut and dry. Let's put it on the docket for later this week. Be good, Alfred. And finally, Mr. Lionel Fisher, on charges of spectral property damage. Mr. Fisher, you're a first-timer. Welcome to my court. Thank you, Your Honour. Do you understand the nature of the charges being brought against you? To be honest, I still don't. Your Honour, we intend to prove that while, yes, Mr. Fisher is attached to a bound in tropic shade, he has no relation or foreknowledge of the spirit, and is himself a victim of its behaviour. I see. And is the shade in the room today with us? I'm always here, flesh walker. Ah, lovely. Nice to make your acquaintance. <sighs> you see, I have no idea who this monster is. I don't know why it picked me, and I don't know why it keeps trying to ruin my lease. Uh, we'll get there in due time, Mr. Fisher. Shade, do you have a preferred name? You are not fit to speak to me. Fascinating. Well, this should be interesting, at least. Uh, Ms. Belasco, will you be representing both Mr. Fisher and his Shade? No, Your Honor. The Shade has requested to act as its own counsel. Oh, dear. Does the prosecution have any objections? None at all, Your Honor. None at all. The newly visible didn't fight for our rights like we did. They don't remember what it was like in the early days. And now, they expect to enjoy the fruits of our labors, live in our homes, offering nothing? Fire. You have to be quiet. I can't hear. I can't hear. Why can't you all just be silent? Madame Canara was one of the first to be affected, but the pattern is playing out amongst all of our sensitives. Within the next day or two, we will likely lose the ability to communicate with them in any meaningful way. What does the Council have to say about it? We're meeting tonight, but it's a worldwide crisis, I'm afraid, which means we're on our own. The Council is drafting a public declaration about the emergency. Dr. Barber? Would you please explain your observations to the Prime Minister? Certainly. There's no damage to the eyes. They still react to light, albeit at a delay. They aren't entirely blind, nor are they entirely deaf. They're overloaded. Near the end, Madame Canara told me she was seeing the spectres of insects everywhere. Until they covered the floor. Oh, fuck me. When the blindness set in, they describe it as a sudden fog, not dark but all-encompassing. One of the sensitives said it was like being inside the ghosts before they stopped responding. Okay, right, right, shit, right. Okay. As the sensitives were exposed to more and more from beyond the veil, it seems reasonable to assume that the sheer volume of specters is what's to blame. And the fog, what's the source of that? Go ahead. Bacterium, we think. A few billion years worth of them. Oh. So, we're about to drown in an ocean of dead germs. It's our best theory at the moment. I am in hell. This is hell. Close enough. There's no reason to think it will stop with the sensitives. Health security sent up a flag. We had an anomalous amount of spectral-related health emergencies starting late last night. And it's spiking. If it follows suit... You're talking about a f an epidemic of blindness. To start with. Sir, I don't believe this is something we can possibly prepare for. You may wish to consider isolation 
for your own safety at this point. The more remote areas may prove navigable for longer. No. Thank you. No. If we don't do this proper, we'll be responsible for the panic. And it's not like I can escape them in death. <laughs> Thank you, both. But we'll stay. We do not believe that this task will be impossible. But it will require vigilance, courage, and a reappraisal of a century of public planning. Our plan calls for two new cities, side by side, but separate. Built on artificially raised islands where no human has ever lived before. Good afternoon. If you can hear my voice, please listen closely to the following instructions. God save the King, and God bless Greater England. Help is on its way. This is a temporary affliction. If you are still able to see, help your loved ones that cannot. If you are still able to hear, guide your loved ones that cannot. It is important that you go outside. Please go safely, but quickly, until you are adjacent to the nearest road. It is important that you stay where you can be seen. Army reservists with infrared optics are currently moving through your town. They will bring help. They will bring food. Put one hand on the wall and follow it to your front door. You may sit or lie down. Make yourself comfortable. You are not the only person who requires assistance. We ask that you be patient. This is a temporary affliction. Help is on its way. These instructions will repeat. Please keep listening for any updates. God save the King, and God bless Greater England. You can see why I hesitated. I know, I know choice isn't something I'm gonna see much of, but that's not a choice. That was a guaranteed death. Here, it's still merely implied. I think I've got maybe an hour before the fog is here. Then it will be time to leave the tower. 
best of all possible worlds are behind us, and we are deep in the dead channels. But we give it one more cycle, one more transmission, one more world. If it's alive and livable, then that's my exit. Whoa! Whoa! Jesus! Did you hear that? I don't think the walls are going to hold much longer. Okay. One more moment with the tower. Let me say some goodbyes. Then we listen. Then, God willing, we leap. And I hope some version of you is out there to catch me. Because that would sure as hell make the destination a lot more livable. Watch out for me, okay? I'm on my way. been listening to observable radio tonight's episode palimpsest was performed by the ensemble featuring phil van hest ray lundberg jesse leal minkette josh kelly kai Trong, david Wu, jason smith jack rigoli sony green hector leal liam gregory kimberly scott the Sui family players kyle Gould, gabe diani etta divine mariah angus robinson Lori penny jared rosen cohen edenfield paul warren Wendy Hector, Tatiana Gefter, Joseph Faraday, Alastair Stewart, Perperina, Christy Wolven, Ray Witte, Katie Scovholt, and John Stafford. Written and edited by Cameron Suey. Produced by Cameron Suey, Phil Van Hest, and Perperina. Our psychology consultant is Dr. Elisa Leal. Art by Corinne Fletcher. Our theme is The Backrooms, performed by Mew. Additional music from this episode provided by John Algar, John Bjork, Johans Bornloff, Franz Gordon, Raymond Grouse, Tim Kulig, Esther Garcia, Gavin Luke, Harley Rain, Moreland Songs, Rim Dick Long Soundtracks, Sight of Wonders, and Francis Wells. Observable Radio is listener-supported. Thanks to all of our patrons and listeners, including Kathleen, John, Jeff, Tid, Russ, Rick, Rachel, Callison, and Brianna. If you'd like to contribute towards our production costs and payment for our voice actors, as well as get access to behind-the-scenes information, extra production material, and an ad-free early release feed of this show, you can do so at patreon.com slash observableradio. Full transcripts and more available at observableradio.com. Stick around after the credits for a look at the podcast Nowhere On Air, late-night community radio broadcasts from a strange little town, from ensemble member Jess Syrett. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned. Please stop. I'm trying to sleep. Hey there, folks. Your host and pal Jess here. If you're hearing this, that means you found our frequency. Or maybe it found you. If it's my voice trickling out of your speakers, however it may have gotten there, that means you're tuned in to Nowhere on Air, our little community radio show here in Braden, Alberta, where we do our best to keep you updated on the who's, what's, when's, where's, and why's of our little town. The how's, however, are usually a different story. You know how it is around here. If you don't, and you'd like to, we invite you to tune in... Maybe you've sensed a shadow coming. A storm rising and writhing just over the horizon. Or something like a voice calling on the wind. Something you remember from a dream. If you have, find us wherever you get your podcasts. Or on Twitter at Nowhere On Air for information, updates, and more. Listen close. Don't wander off, especially out here. <laughs>